Hi everyone, I've got a bit of a uh, weathering video today, which I haven't done in a while. Um, but I've recently got hold of these Acura Scale 21 ton mineral wagons. And I'm going to weather them up in this video, but I thought before I do that, I'll just give you a quick look at them. Um, because they're very nice as far as wagons go. So I've got three packs of these now. Um, I'll just hold this one up to the camera so you can have a better look at the detail they are really nice and i'd expect nothing less from a cura scale at this point i've just been messing around with them and seeing kind of what couplings and things i can get away with hello and back to the detail on these they are absolutely fab as always you've got the nice you know, separately fitted details. You've got the brake hand, handbrake handle on there. They look absolutely great. They run really nicely. Um, yeah, they just, they really look the part and they look awesome in a nice long rake as well. So just to test out what I was gonna to do to weather these, I've started this one. This is only the very first kind of layer. I've not done any of the underframe and I still need to go over all this with the airbrush, tone it down, etc. but I've still got all the rest of those to do, plus another, I think, three or four that are already downstairs on the weathering bench. So I'll get those on, the, on there in a second. We can crack on. Before I do that, one nice thing about where the layout is situated. Once you get the nice authentic sound effects of trains running past outside, which never gets old. timing right so i'll get these on the bench and we'll crack on while i'm going i'm finding out new stuff about these wagons they've got like a if you are using the nem socket they've got this like really nice sprung kind of system as they so you know the, the buffers won't get locked up as they go around curves not only that you've got the nice sprung buffers on there too right so I've got the screw links glued on. Now we can make a start on actually getting these painted. So in the pack, you get a bit of history about the wagon and this really useful reference picture. So the nice thing about weathering these is, it is impossible to overdo them. You can find them in absolutely every condition imaginable. So you can weather them lightly, heavily, whatever you want. It just doesn't matter whether you make mistakes or what, because I'm you know, still gonna look prototypical, I would have thought. So I'm gonna do a few of these lighter, a few of them heavier, and a few somewhere in between. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just completely cover them in a kind of rusty coat, I guess. So for this, I'm using two kind of shades of rust. The first one is Freight Bauxite, which is from Railmatch. The other one is also Railmatch, and that is just Rail Red, it's called. So I've just got a blob of both of them. I'm gonna get my trusty Humbrol rust weathering powders. Just pour a bunch of that on top. And I'm gonna get my Humbrol Dark Earth Weathering Powder, pour a little bit of that there too. And then just get a bit of water on the brush. A little bit of water on the brush too, and I'm just gonna mix that up. And that'll give you kind of like a textured paint. So when it dries, it'll give you that kind of corrosive kind of texture that you get with rust, which is Cool. So if you need to add a bit more water, you can do. Right, you're gonna shriek when I do this, but most of this is gonna come back off. But you literally just cover the wagon in it, get into all the nooks and crannies, go over the decal if you want, it doesn't matter. So you know, it's all gonna come back off again. And you wanna put it on quite thick too, so you kind of build up the, uh, 
the textured effect in the corners. Uh, that'll do. I'm gonna keep a little bit of that cleaner. So pretty messy job this, but it's all good fun. Doesn't matter if you get some on the underframe because we're going to do go over that with the uh, some other paints in the airbrush and weather that separately. So it really doesn't matter where you get this. It's a nice thing about this method. So right, I'm going to work my way through these and just completely cover these. So I'll be right back. Right, so I've finished doing these. I've just covered them in the gunk that I've just mixed up. Next thing to do. You just grab a cotton bud and you can use thinners or water if you want or you can just do it dry i just like to scrape it off dry and it actually works better if you kind of take the bud bit off the top so you're kind of just using the edge of the stick there we go so yeah, you do have to just rub it quite hard to kind of break the surface initially once you've done that it'll start to come off so It's really up to new, you now how far you want to take this. You can you can just scratch a little bit off, um, or you can leave absolutely loads on, and you can use. I'm going to take the bud off this and just use the kind of the stick bit, so I can get some kind of finer lines here. You can use any tool really. I mean, it might even be. Let's try using a screwdriver and see what happens. Yeah, that looks. Looks quite cool with the screwdriver. Yeah, I might just do it with this actually. So that's what, what I'm going for, just this kind of rusting effect. It 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 um it looks a little bit jarring at this point between the kind of bright grey and the and the rust, but we're gonna go over this with the air airbrush after to kind of soften and blend um, between the two. The key is to try and just not make it too uniform in any way. You want to kind of keep it as random as possible. Chip it off on the edges there. So if you wanted to, you could you could take this literally right back to a virtually clean wagon. I might do that on a few of them to kind of show, try and portray like a one of these mineral wagons that had only just kind of come into service because they were still being built during the period that I'm modeling. And you want to kind of keep a bit of variety on there. Um, right, so that's, that's the last one I did. This is the other one, so. I want to try and vary them a bit so they're not too similar, but we can do that with the airbrush as well. So I'll crack on with the rest of these and I'll be back when they're all done. Right, I've finished scraping off some of the rust and this is what I've been left with. I've left more on some of them and less on others. So you can see that that second one there is a little bit cleaner. That one I've left the middle panel more rusty than the outer ones. That's pretty clean. I've got some really rusty ones back further there as well. So I've got a kind of mix so they don't look um, too samey, I guess. Right, next step, I'm going to get this wash. So this is Agrax Earthshade by Citadel. So you can get these in um, most model shops, but they sell them in the Games, Games Workshop stores as well. So I'm just going to use this to kind of blend some of the rust in on some of the heavier um, more heavily weathered ones. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna bother with this on all of them. Right, I'm giving this a shake. I'm just gonna stick it on. I haven't tr actually tried this method before. I'm just making this up as I go along, really. So I hope it's gonna turn out okay. So 
So I'm hoping that this is just going to add a little bit of staining. I think what I'll probably do is just start at the top here and maybe just pull it down. Whether that's picking that up okay, but it is kind of the top is slightly dirtier than the bottom. Um, I don't know about this to be honest because I think the I think it's just going to be covered by the airbrush. Let's try it on one of the lighter ones and just see how it looks. Let's just try it on this panel. Um, it looks good around the doors, I think, because it brings out the detail. It's just going to be really heavy. We can always wipe this off if it doesn't look very good. I think what I might actually do is get a cotton bud and then just, I'll just take a little bit of that off again and see what we're left with. Um, yeah, that's brought out some of the detail around those hinges, hasn't it? Let's have a go on the other side, see what happens. Let's put it on quite heavily around there, around the doors, and we'll just see where we get on. Given these doors would be opening and closing, the coal unloaded there, that is where the, the weathering would be heavier. Yeah, I'm not too sure about that. I don't really know how much of a difference that's making. I might whip the airbrush out and see how it looks. Right, airbrush is rigged up. So I'm just going to do the under frames first. That's just started to kind of blend everything together and tone it down a little bit. Trying to build up this coal dust kind of weathered look around, around here where these um, flaps would come up and down and there would have just been coal dust pouring um, down these gaps here and just around the uh, the rim at the top too. For anyone wondering, on that last bit, I was using this airbrush here. Hang on, let me move them out of the way. That's the one. So I got this off Amazon for nineteen pounds or something. Um, they're super cheap. I mean, they work fine, and you can buy five of these for the same price as one Iwata airbrush, which are about a hundred quid. So I mean, even if you use this like. 20 times and it broke and you had to replace it next year, well, you just buy a new one for less than 20 pounds. That seems like a no brainer to me rather than buying like a really expensive one, especially if you don't use it that much like I do. I only use it a couple of times a year. Right, 
Right. So I'm just going to put, um, I, I like the colour that these are on the inside as they are. So I'm just going to add a bit of coal dust to some of them. A few of them I'm going to add weathering powders to as well. This one I'm just going to keep as is, just so there's a bit of variation in them. So just a bit of coal in the corners where it hasn't all emptied out properly. Basically, I've already got quite a few of these wagons that are um, full. So I, I want to have a kind of empties rake and a full rake. Eventually, one day I want to have like a big kind of double track mainline layout. I'll be able to kind of run them in, uh, in opposite directions which will be cool. Right, I'm just going to shake that around, pour out the excess, and then I'm kind of just left with a bit of coal in the corners, just get rid of that bit of crap in there. Put some weathering powders in there now, so I'm just going to start off with the rust one, and then just get a bit of dark earth in there too. the excess into that one. And I can use the excess just to colour the bottom of this one as well. I'm just working that kind of all over the place really just to colour the bottom. It's giving it quite a nice colour, it's subtle but it has made a difference. Right, into the next one. through these and we'll be back in a sec. Right that's all of those done. It has given a quite nice mucky finish to the bottom. A bit of powder still in that one. So I'm just going to work a bit of geoscenics glue into the into the corners like on the other one. And just put a bit of coal on the edge. like after that. article on the track. So I've coupled them up to the uh, Acura scale Manor that I've got. So other than a couple of Batman wagons, I've got a full train of Acura scale products now, which is cool. So I'll just pan the camera down the train to just show you these. That's how the tops are looking. I 
I'm really pleased with how these have come out. I like the kind of the um, I like the contrast between the the different ones to show different ages, and I think the airbrushing kind of really brought them all together. That's the back one wagon in there just to compare and see how they kind of run a uh, couple together. I like that one with a few clean panels and then one dirtier panel. There you go. I'm absolutely delighted with these. And the other thing is, you can get them really, really close coupled. got really really small gaps between the stock there see how close the buffers are which is always nice to see and they get around my third radius curved absolutely no problem so I would absolutely recommend grabbing some of these if you do um, if you are interested in them. Um, I have a affiliate link with the Curious Scale, so I'm gonna, I'll am gonna put that in the video description. If you click on that and you, you do wanna pick some of these up, or a manor for that matter, um, you get a small discount and it helps my channel out as well. So a win-win really, if you're gonna pick some of these up. So again, I'll put that in the description if you're interested. And I'll also just put the, um, reference for the paints and things like that I've used too. So as always, thank you very much for watching and I'll um, be back soon I'm sure with a running video in, probably involving these wagons.